Hello humans, I'm Batsy, and today we are finally back at my SMP. For those who are new to the channel and are wondering why I already have 40 levels, I have the habit of just fishing for the first couple of days. It allows me to monitor the server to make sure everything is working properly, and in case I have to, I can quickly go fix things. I also find it very relaxing, so it's also a good way of taking a break from a hardworking week. That being said, I wanted to have a different start of the season this time, so I will be resetting my character. But before that, I wanted to show the humans all of the stuff I have been fishing, I have a lot of goodies from the aquaculture mod. The main drop from aquaculture is this box, the Neptune's Bounty. Which, I guess it doesn't really say in JEI what's inside. Well, basically, you can get any of those Neptunium gear items, and I believe there are chances of giving ingots and nuggets too. I haven't fully checked what all of those gear pieces do, but I had a quick glance over it, and some of them look pretty busted. Something worth noting is that the fishing rods from aquaculture don't drop from fishing. So, early on, I did what I usually do, I got a normal fishing rod until I looted one with mending, and I used that one until I combined it enough times to have it fully enchanted. In my opinion, unless you have an enchanting setup or something, there is no reason to not use the vanilla ones. Normal fishing does have a low chance of giving Neptunium nuggies, so once I had enough of them, I made myself a Neptunium fishing rod. This one is important because it comes with one extra lower level, which comes from the Neptune song. And an extra luck level that comes from the golden hook. And speaking about the hook, for some reason, the durability is not going down. I assume it should because you can see some of those hooks have a chance to not consume durability, that to me sounds like they should break eventually. But this one is pretty much full of durability, and I have been using it for several hours already, I don't fully get what's going on. I thought that maybe because I have mending on the fishing rod, but then I don't understand why the extra durability from the other hooks, it's incredibly easy to get mending with a villager. But whatever is the case, let's talk about the goodies I got. Look at this, look at all these boxes. I think I'm probably rich at this point. Well, kinda rich, I don't have anything else other than those boxes and a ton of fish. I did get a heart of the sea pretty early on, I saw a shipwreck and I was quick to loot it. I also managed to get two more ingots from Nuggies alone, and I have a trident with no durability left. This trident was kinda wild. I was pretty much fishing in here, minding my own business, when suddenly a drown came and killed me because I wasn't paying attention. I came back, killed my first ever drown, and it dropped the trident. Straight up, the first drown of the server gave it to me. I'm more happy about this trident than about the dozens of boxes to be honest. Farming for a trident is incredibly annoying, and I kind of need one if I plan on living underwater. Other than that, I've got all of those fishing rods, which like I said, I believe they are better early on than the aquaculture ones mainly because it's easy to drop them and combine them to make a perfect one. At least until you have enough for the Neptunium one. And of course I have a metric ton of food too, which I honestly don't mind, I think it's always useful to start well prepared. Other than that, I don't really have much else. There are a few diamonds from the treasure I found, and some other random items here and there, nothing crazy to write home about. Those gold ingots were given to me in exchange of. I actually don't remember, I think was iron, or maybe something else. Anyway, that should sum up what I did the first couple of days, now my idea is to restart my character to have a fresh start, because I have a couple ideas in mind, and we will be opening all of those boxes in a little bit. So let's waste no time, Editor Batsy, cue the intro. Today and the world is waiting Move along to the song singing in your 
Yes, I think this place will do me well. While I make the first few steps, let me explain why are we here. On one side, I wanted to show how I start in a world, the steps I take, and how I progress through the create mod. To properly show that I came with the idea of making a couple shorter videos the first week, so it shows the way I mine and the first machines I make. Otherwise it happens as usual, that I make a workstation too quickly, and by that point I have already skipped many steps that maybe are interesting to see for people that are new to the create mod. The other reason is that the hardcore mod it's not ready yet, but I came up with a way to go about it until the mod is ready. Oh, I guess I restarted the character, but not the statistics. Alright, let's try this again. Sweet, not yes, all my stats are brand new. So, my idea is, I can keep track of the amount of times I have died in here, and maybe I can come up with a penalty for every time I die, maybe I throwing away diamonds for every death or something, I'm not sure yet. Actually, why not you all tell me ideas on what could be a punishment for death until the hardcore mod is finished. Something reasonable though, don't make me drop my entire gear every time, that would make me cry. Alright that's enough stuff to get going, now to mine some iron. What I like to do is, find a cave or ravine that can be accessed from the floor level, and just go down there with a few doors. Why this method I hear you asking? Well, so long as you make sure not to drown, there are no monsters in here. I find this to be a whole lot more safe. Alright, got a couple of tools, we can try go deeper now, see if we can find a diamond while we looking for more iron. What? That doesn't give food? I was hoping I could eat a jellyfish, I guess it makes more sense this way. Now yes, that's enough food for the time being, let's get going. I can already see some iron up ahead. Never mind, there is even more iron down here. I saw a big opening, maybe we can get more lucky with diamonds in there. Wait, might as well get those too. Oh, there is more, that's perfect. Now yes, look at this, this is what I was looking for. Wait what, where are my doors? Dang, they must have floated away and I wasn't paying attention. Well, I couldn't find them so I'm making new doors. I shouldn't need any more wood anyway. But for real, look at this big cave, this is so perfect. Diamonds, I see diamonds. I told you guys, this is the way to do it. Five diamonds that's a pretty good start. I think I don't see any more diamonds yet, but I'm going to start mining some of this zinc, gold and iron. Oh, it looks like I did a quest. Hmm. I completed 4 kilometers of swimming, but this one is at zero. Maybe one doesn't start until the previous one finishes. Oh, by the way, these quests are here so we can acquire some coins with them, this is what we going to use for the shopping district. The idea is that the quests should be a way to reward those that play regularly, while at the same time making the coins have more value and become harder to farm because tunnel bores make diamonds become too easy to get. The coins can also be converted between various tiers, so there is a good value range in there, we will find out soon how hard they are to get, and what value things end up having. Some quests aren't particularly well explained, and some seem a whole lot harder than others. Like this one. I just removed my door with an axe, and that doesn't count as cutting. Maybe cutting it refers to a mechanical saw, and maybe it's not only a mechanical saw, but also this specific item in the icon. We will have to learn how they work as we play. But I hope this experiment does well, I'm actually excited to see what happens, at least better than having diamonds with no value anyway. 
Now let's get back to iron farming. Oh, I think there is a cave down here. Yep, there is an entire cave in here. I can already see diamonds in there, but it's quite full of mobs, I'm not sure if I want to risk it to be honest with you. So far so good, no one seems to be coming after me. Never mind, this was a terrible idea, this was the worst idea in the history of ever. Run. I think we are finally safe now. Run. We back underwater, much better, much safer. Alright, that should be enough for now. What I think on doing is, going back to my base slash cliff thingy majigi, and open up all of those boxes. After that, I think I'm going to gather all my belongings and find a spot in the ocean where I can start a temporary platform or something. At least until I'm prepared to live underwater. Let's dump all the items in here for now. And see what those bad boys have inside. And... Open. No, open. I said open. Hello? Open. Is anything supposed to happen here? Oh, here we go, Neptunium ingot. Four of them actually, that's really good no? I mean we can craft any tool with this, or even boots. I kinda like the chest too, it's really nice. What else we got? A shovel, cool, and a message in a bottle. What does this even do? Shadow claimer, add unobtain, it's gone, oh for real it's gone, okay, well never mind I guess. Well let's pop another. What do you have? Nice, the pickaxe is the important one. Can throw this one away now. Another shovel, sweet. See if I can read this message. What the hell is a fishalu? Alright, never mind on those messages, can't even read them. Neptunium ho, cool cool, and another pickaxe. The ho I did know what it does, it's really useful. What is the pickaxe anyway? Neptune's grace. Usable without speed penalty underwater. I don't know what does that even mean. Does that mean just underwater, or the floating penalty? Oh wow, floating already works. Let's try again. Yeah, no kidding, it removes the floating penalty, that's actually really huge. For anyone wondering, why is that relevant? Well, creative flight has the same mechanic, and the same penalty. My guess is that this pickaxe should also work with the flight anchor, which is huge in my opinion. Another pickaxe, maybe I can sell my spare gear. And the boots, awesome. Neptune's swiftness, increases your swim speed. Okay, oh, it's a helm. Improves your underwater vision. Okay, that doesn't sound as good. I mean it looks pretty sick though, look at that. How much does it improve the vision? Maybe it's a bit more bright. Yeah, definitely more bright, I guess it's alright, nothing crazy to write home about. The boots sound more important, let's see how good are those. Yeah, no kidding, this feels like Depth Strider 3 or 4 already, and the boots aren't even enchanted. I love this, this is really good. Hey, elephant, do you mind, this is my living room. Neptunium knife. Increases the amount of fillets you get. Oh, interesting. It doesn't say by how much though, just increases ha. Huh? I mean we can test it out, there is fish for days. Iron knife, what do you give? Three fillets. And the Neptunium? Also three fillets. Well, so much for increased amount. I'm gonna try another bottle, maybe I can read it this time. Press Alt F4 for free diamonds. Alright dude, we not reading those anymore. What a troll. Another Neptunium ingot. 
And a sword, that one is new. Let's see what do you do? Neptune's might. Increases damage against enemies underwater. Oh, sweet, it says underwater, not specifically only fishes like the trident. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Another hoe. And another knife. Throw away those useless bottles. Mine the boxes. And get more boxes. Oh sweet, another fishing rod. And the leggings, this one is new. Let's see. Neptune's buoyancy. Makes you weightless underwater. That means nothing to me, let's find out. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I mean this makes sense. I mean, it sounds nice, but I'm not that convinced about it. So far the helm and the leggings don't convince me a whole lot. Chest plate, now we talking. What do you do? Neptune's lungs, allows you to breathe underwater. Now that sounds a whole lot better. Yeah, this changes everything. I mean we were able to have water breathing with the diving helm and stuff, but this one is just for free. The helm I honestly prefer it without, it's just too bright in my opinion. I think those gear pieces are either a hit or a miss, nothing in between. And another shovel. I didn't even check this one. Usable without speed penalty underwater. Sweet, so it's the same as the pickaxe. The hoe I did know, you can tile farmland and you don't need water sources nearby, this one is pretty cool. We do have a bunch of algae though. Which I guess is used for literally nothing, alright. More leggings. Bow, I think this is the last one I was missing. Neptune's strike. Makes arrows go smoothly through water. Okay. That actually sounds pretty busted, no? The gear does look pretty funny though. I can't tell if I love it, or it's a bit too much. <laughs> a few minutes later. This is what I ended up getting. I think this is pretty good, for just a couple days of fishing. A lot of items that we got exactly three of each though, that's interesting. I guess it kinda makes sense if all of them have the same odds. Overall, I think the gear looks really good, incredibly useful underwater obviously. Some pieces seem to be far worse than others, but in general I like the idea of giving special properties instead of straight up fortune 10 or something. I think the boots being the less common it's honestly the best outcome, we can always craft those with few ingots. Missing the chest plates would be a whole lot worse. I honestly think that the box that gives for ingots it's probably the best outcome. You can craft any of the tools with it, and even a couple of them like a rod and a hoe or something, or several shovels if you need that for some reason. Most of the armor is better to drop it from the box directly, otherwise you waste a whole lot of ingots for them in my opinion. I'm going to take a set of armor and tools, and I will leave the rest for damn damn so they have some gear too. And with that out of the way, I think I'm going to grab the important materials, and go find myself a place in the middle of the sea where I can start my base. Somewhere around here seems like a good central place to start. I'm going to make a temporary waypoint so I know where I'm going. Okay. That beam looks a bit cursed. Why is it glitching though? I mean glitching, that's obviously a feature, yes, yes. And just like that, I've got myself a pretty basic platform. It's somewhat in the middle of the ocean. Maybe I should go a bit further down, but oh well, I think it's fine for now. For the next episode, I will be making the first steps towards a workstation, which I'm not sure yet if I will start building underwater, or up here. I might mine a bit between episode, I have seen several cave entrances and ravines during my way here. Oh, and before I forget, so far I haven't died, but let me know what kind of punishments would be interesting to do until the hardcore mod is ready. But that will be it for today, hope you all had fun with this first episode, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this editing, and this pace, instead of the usual faster content. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see the humans next time.